All right, we are talking about this big idea. Americanization. Pero before we uh, wrap up our show for today, uh, let's know history and know self with Professor Brandon Riley. Panoorin po natin to. Not many people know, but the term assimilation in Filipino history originally had nothing to do with America. Beginning in the 1870s, nationalists like Jose Rizal, Marcelo H. Del Pilar, and Graciana Lopez Hayena attempted to convince the, Spanish, uh, the government in Spain to recognize their rights as Spanish citizens in the Philippine colony. Filipinos, despite having been part of the Spanish Empire for over three centuries, had not yet achieved political, legal, racial, or cultural equality with the Spaniards. The goal then became to assimilate to create similar institutions in the colony that existed in Spain. This was the Filipinos' first encounter with assimilation. Given that Rizal and the other Ilustrados, Ilustrado is Spanish for enlightened ones, were educated in Spanish schools, whether in the colony or in Spain itself, given that they understood Spain's political and legal culture well, and even represented themselves as modern Spaniards of a certain sort. They dressed like Europeans, they inhabited European culture more broadly with ease, they spoke Spanish and French and German and other continental languages. One would have presumed that their efforts would be met with success. But their journalistic activism in newspapers like La Solidaridad, their petitioning the Spanish Cortes, and their meetings with influential politicians came to nothing. By the early 1890s, they realized that such reformist measures were insufficient. If the Filipinos wanted freedom, they had to make use of more radical measures. Assimilation as a political, legal, and cultural campaign had failed. Would this be an indication of things to come? The late Spanish period of assimilation in Filipino history is similar in many ways to the next one, when Filipinos sought to assimilate to another colonial culture, this time American, during the first half of the 20th century and after. After two violent wars, the first in which America overthrew Spain and the Philippines in 1898, the second, longer and more brutal, in which it overpowered Filipinos fighting for independence until 1913, Filipinos would again become colonial subjects. Remaking themselves in some fashion like the imperialists who suppressed their physical bodies and ways of thought became once more a useful, if fraught, undertaking. From 1898 until the 1960s, Filipinos on both sides of the Pacific encountered and remade American culture in countless ways. One elite illustration of this process comes from Carlos P. Romulo, who lived from 1898 to 1985. In his eventful life, he became the first Filipino to win a Pulitzer Prize in 1942, helped to draft the UN's Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948, and became a major political figure in nearly every Philippine administration before the 1986 People Power Revolution. Another example, less privileged, comes from Carlos Bulosan, who lived from 1913 to 1956. Itinerant farm worker, labor activist, and writer famous for his semi-autobiographical novel, America is in the Heart, published in 1946. How we think of Romulo and Bulosan's culture, culture itself is a complicated term, not to mention the thousands of other immigrants to the U.S. during the first half of the 20th century who live less publicized but certainly no less significant lives, should help us forever unsettle our notions of what assimilation means. Born in the Philippines, experts in a certain form of Americanism that was at once political, literary, cultural, and more. They remix culture in a way that defies categorization as either neatly Filipino or American. Once again, I want to thank our panelists, Carolina, JP, Carol, Enrique, for being here, for weighing in on this uh, very difficult topic to talk about. You know, it's so broad. But all of you really bring something to this table, and us Kababayans are very thankful for it. Maraming salamat. We'll see you all again next Tuesday, Talk Tuesdays, with our same panel. Salamat po.